So on the restart, leaves his way, fires and scores! We get to attack, the coming middle, from a free of Sofa, hit. shot, score! It's around weed, off the bounce, shot and a Dude. score! Wow! Levine with some speed. Levine fakes a pass, Levine all the way is gonna fire and score! Up top, Druin. He wants a shot oh. and he's got it! Wow! <laughs> Meanwhile, Arbusto, one-handed oh. shot oh. is up and in! Got a penalty flag down. Skip pass oh. sets up the board. And it's time to pluck a chicken. Nah. Nah. Wow. But a good one-handed scoop up. Oh, Roy! Oh, and he lights the lamp! <laughs> Lowers that left shoulder and fires up the cougar pass. Look at this! Nice you play. Fake shot by <laughs> Brunswick and then he drills it on his way to the ground. Chase. Extra feed. Shot! Yeah. Score! Game yeah. over! Well, hello everyone, and welcome here to Exeter. Nick and Astis, Roger, how with you? It's our Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Coverage of the NHIAA semi-final battle here in the 2023 Boys Lacrosse Tournament. First of two Division I semi-finals here for Bill Ball Stadium tonight. Exeter, the number two seed. And Pinkerton, the number three. Both teams went 13 and five during the regular season. They met once way back in late April. That was a low scoring five to four Blue Hawk victory. Both had no problem in the quarterfinals. Exeter dispatched over 14 to three. Pinkerton, a win over their next door neighbor, Londonderry, 15 to seven. No surprise, Roger. These two meeting on this side of the bracket here. Obviously, top seed Bishop Girton and Merrimack will get together in part two of the semifinal doubleheader. But quickly, Roger, before we get to the national anthem, a couple of keys both ways here for Exeter and Pinkerton. Oh, clearly, uh, Cole Frank for uh, Pinkerton controlling the face-off circle. Uh, McElroy has had troubles with some of the better uh, face-off guys this year. Uh, so that will truly be one of the keys to the game as well as goaltender play. All right, national anthem right now. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. 
Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time. Given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with The Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of The Bean Group today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month, Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services, you'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly, no one brings you better offers. Ready to go. Little miscue there. Roger, your <laughs> your keys included Cole Frank at the X for Pinkerton. And both goaltenders who are obviously veterans and well experienced in between the pipes tonight should be uh, play a big part. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, Bernich uh, for, for the Blue Hawks has had an excellent season. Um, and uh, the weight's been put on him uh, because Tapman, uh, Ryan Tapman has been injured, uh, although he is back. Uh, that is going to be one of the keys to the game, by the way, and that is uh, both of these teams are healthy. Uh, both uh, uh, the Blue Hawks have got all their players back. Uh, Owen Williams is back. Lechner is back. Uh, and they are healthy. Uh, and uh, uh, as long as, uh, you know, these two teams can play the same kind of game that they played earlier in the season, which it was, quite frankly, one of the best games. Next to the, 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 the Bishop Girton uh, BC game uh, that we did, uh, which was just the best game I've seen all season, that was the second best game. So I'm expecting uh, much the same type of battle here tonight. Teams beating at midfield. Exeter as the two seed in their home whites on their home field. Coincidentally, of course, a neutral site. Determine in advance. Pinkerton as the three in the road reds. And three officials, Roger, as oh. well here in the semifinals. Yeah, actually, we've got four, uh, four? during the uh, playoffs. Yeah, when you go to the semis, they put a, uh, a bench uh, official uh, along with the threesome out there. You've got uh, Mike Toff, uh, Brian Murphy, uh, Tim Befke. Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim, we've done a lot of uh, games with Tim this year. Uh, and uh, the senior state, statesman's out there, uh, Sean Murphy. Excellent proof. Could not ask for much better weather either. Overcast, a little drizzly earlier, but right now the sun is out and the temperature is right around 60 degrees, so pretty good. It's awesome. Yeah, I was uh, uh, hoping we wouldn't get any rain and certainly held off. Will McElroy is the sophomore Fogo going up against perhaps the state's best in Cole Frank. The junior for Pinkerton, who's going to wrestle away possession after the officials sound the whistle. Astros will come here on attack first left to right in this first quarter. This is Benjamin Quintilani, another one of these young sophomores who have made an impact for Coach Godreau. Coach now in his third season after taking over for the longtime head coach slash legend Brian O'Reilly, who is in attendance today, of course as the Pinkerton Athletic Director. Astros are going to work it around the perimeter. And now Quintilani going to watch as Joey Gallo makes a move to his right. He's cut off. Quintilani swings it back. Uber, a step-down bouncer, is going to end up wide. That's Michael Uber. Another three-year starter and a member of this senior class for Pinkerton. Astros trying to get back to the championship game for the first time since 2019. This pass is off target. And the Blue Hawks are going to take it off the carpet and take their time here on the clear as Burnich is going to find a long pole in the middle of the field. That's Ryan Garrity. Ooh. Good reel in here by Lechner. And now the senior 
going to trot down that far sideline on Exeter's first trip here on attack with just over a minute gone by. Now, as I expected, they got uh, Ridge Crossman uh, playing Lechner today. Uh, Size-wise, that's just what you need if you are uh, Pinkerton. You need to have body size against uh, uh, Gavin. He's just such a force out there. Gabe Albert, one of the four captains with his first touch. And now it'll come back on the near side for Williams. It's a new set, uh, bringing Lechner up on the midfield line. Talked about how versatile of a player he has been. And resilient as well. There Coming it is. Back from injury, he's going to put one on the five hole. Right through the five hole. He's going to score on the senior goaltender, Tyler LeBlanc. And Owen Williams. He's got the... Blue Hawks out to the start they were hoping for. It's one nothing. two minutes gone by. Now that's the firepower that the Blue Hawks have been missing uh, since the middle of the season. Uh, that left-handed power uh, who can break free from the midfield defender. Uh, nice, nice low shot, a uh, good bounce shot. Way to start it off. That's that first line that is just so effective for the Blue Hawks with uh, Lazowitz and... Uh, uh, Here's Garrity. Looks for a man in front of the oh, cage, nice. and a save is made by LeBlanc. Able to shut down Nick Sullivan on the doorstep. A whistle. He's going to clear things out. And allow Pinkerton to take a breath here before the restart as both head coaches are going to make some substitutions. Mm -hmm. Of course, on the sidelines, we mentioned Coach Gaudreau. Exeter now in the second year under head coach Matt Brewster, who took over for... Headman Jerry Holly a few years back. Exeter, meanwhile, trying to get to their third straight state championship game. Pinkerton hoping to do it for the first time since 2019. Oh. Here's a shot and a score, and it's another one on the run. This time it's the sophomore Marshall Lazowitz who goes upstairs, and Exeter's got a 2 0 lead. Well, as I was saying right before the faceoff, uh, this first line for the Blue Hawks is just, it, it has been so effective this year. Uh, Gabe Albert being the third midfielder on that line with uh, Williams and Lazowitz. But these guys can run, and they cover for each other. They follow on the dodges, and this is the effect that they have on a game. Another push. Officials calling the, the X pretty tight here as we hear three whistles on now three faceoffs. Mm -hmm. So Williams and Lazowitz each registering early first quarter goals here in the semifinals for Exeter. Pinkerton looking for a response. Well, like I said, the uh, the goaltending is going to be a factor here, and I, I, I was expecting that uh, Curtis Michaud would be starting today, uh, but uh, LeBlanc doesn't look comfortable uh, on either of those two goals, so maybe he can settle down and Pinkerton can get a good possession here and give him a break. Two senior goaltenders. Oh, yeah. Quintalani, shot and oh, score. Shit. A somersault afterwards in the celebration. As Pinkerton's on the board. A good pass as well. Leads to the shot for the sophomore, and the Astros get what they need. Back within one at 2-1. Yeah, and this is what they've done all uh, season long. They have really done well working the middle of the field and finding either the cutting midfielder or the rotating attackman up high off the crease. Uh, and they do a great job of finding... Uh, Quintalani from uh, from Frioli on that. Face off dug out by Frank. Wow. Out of the box. Yeah, just stepped over. Official had a good look at the 30 yard line there. And now Cole will get rid of it. Opportunity for Pinkerton to tie here. Joey Gallo in front of the Exeter bench. Now going to go downhill. Once a one-on-one, -on -one, the defender is Sean DeLello. Draws a slide at the top. Back door. Shot and score. Well, Ryan Lynch, one of these senior snipers for Coach Godro, the future Southern New Hampshire University penman, lights the lamp, and it's 2-2. Well, he was on fire in the uh, quarterfinal game against uh, Londonderry. Uh, he had six goals in the first half of that game, and mm. he picks up right where he left off. And I got to tell you, that was a bullet. And uh, 26 seconds after the uh, first Pinkerton goal, they come right back, and uh, 
Here we are, back at the faceoff circle. This is where they've got to pick up if you're a, an Exeter fan. They've really, they've got to find a way to tie Cole Frank up or double, double pole. Uh, they've got to try and do something here. Well, that's when you know the shot had some, some speed to it. When the officials have to tend to the goaltend, <laughs> uh, tend to the net, rather, uh, after the shot. Well, that'll be a story 20 years from now at the reunion when, uh, when uh, Lynch can say, hey, do you remember that time I ripped the net? <laughs> Always good stuff. Always good stuff. Yeah, you can see the Astros and Blue Hawk players chatting with one, one another. It's a small world, as we know, Roger. These sure. players, coaches, parents familiar with each other after years of battle. Not just in the springtime either, of course, mm. on the elite circuit. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for those rising seniors, I mean, the second half of the lacrosse season is about to start. Uh, yeah. They'll be going out on the road here pretty soon. Meanwhile, crowd continuing to file in here at Bill Ball Stadium. There weren't too many people here just moments before the opening faceoff, but now the stands starting to swell. Astros get another, and they look for another trying to obtain their first lead here if they can score for a third straight time. Yeah, I think that 5 o'clock hour might uh, just be getting the parents out of work and so forth, but uh, yeah, I th I'm sure we'll have a full stadium here. First of two here, the second yeah. game coming at 7.15 Eastern between BG and Merrimack. Here's Fioli. A shot a few inches high. Yeah, the LSM Nichols got a good uh, uh, trail check there, or, or uh, you know, a sh uh, tr check just to see he was shooting. Went off off cage. Lynch full sprint. Oh, Harry Cacciola, the defender, on the rebound. Who's got it? Exeter's got it. Out of the fray comes Jack Herring, the senior. Key ground ball there may have prevented a rebound, and the Blue Hawks methodically are going to cross the fifty. This is Albert on a jog near side, and now the Blue Hawks look to get to work for the first time in several minutes here on the attack with now five minutes gone by first quarter. Yeah, this is their strongest lineup here with the first line midfield. A lot of motion. Here's Lechner, he's going to change direction. Pinkerton's cam leads, trying to stay with him. Lechner swims through, dumps a pass behind the cage. Sullivan, a wraparound shot kicked away by LeBlanc. Second save for the senior, who's on his way to play for Newbury next year. He's going to leave the cage area. Throw a long pass near midfield that's batted down, scooped up by Pinkerton. Trying to swim upstream now is Cody Santamassimo. The junior surrounded, going to shovel one left side for Uber. Uber's got some room. Up ahead, Fioli near the cage. Shot and score for Richard Wong, the junior. In the right place at the right time for the Astros, who kept their foot on the gas. They're going to take their first lead at 3-2 midway through this first quarter. Boy, it looked like a little bit of disorganization on the uh, defensive side of the ball here for the uh, Blue Hawks. A cluster up at the top of the box, which left the low end down very open. And uh, Wong just had to walk in and uh, give a quick fake. Uh, everybody who abandoned that side of the, uh, the field. Meanwhile, three straight goals for Pinkerton and three straight face-off wins for Cole Frank. This one is Lewis McGilroy. They have knocked Frank down there, and a big check goes unheard until now, the whistle. Well, we haven't had a clean face-off yet, have we? No, we haven't. They got a little bit of a shove there from Gallo. He's going to trot off the field. Exeter giving possession. Meanwhile, Lechner is going to fire a bouncer. That one is off target. It's going to roll near side. It's going to stay inbounds. And a good scoop here by the junior, no, the senior, Nick Sullivan. He's going to keep it at this end of the field for Exeter as we move inside of six minutes first quarter. Boy, they had a one-on-one -on -one out there on Jackson Chase, the uh, Astros defender, and they pulled it out. Here's Albert up top to his left, thinking about shooting. He's going to fire a bouncer. It won't get through. And Cam Leeds quickly snatches the ground ball for Pinkerton, but the long pole's in trouble. It's loose, and now Lechner picks it up off the carpet. Blue Hawks will keep it at this end after all. The senior going to jog to a stop goal line extended. And Exeter is going to look to get organized here on yet another trip in the attack zone. 
Good hustle by the Astros to get back on defense. Albert for Williams. And now Lechner. Given room by Leeds. Going to put that shoulder down. Go oh, right yeah. to the cage yep. and score. That's a good goal. That is a good goal. A power move for Lechner who double checks with the official who confirms it's the first for the senior. And Exeter has tied it here at three. Yeah. Uh, he's just a force. Like I said at the beginning of the game, having this big body uh, back and healthy, I mean, look at the stretch and the reach on that kid. I mean, his wingspan's got to be seven feet anyways. And then you put the legs on that. Uh, he, he was, he was a, at least a good foot and a half, two feet away from the crease. So Lechner, who, as we know, suffered a head injury towards the early part of the season here on this field against Bedford, missed several weeks, but has been back, has been healthy, and has been productive, as we know, since his return to the Exeter lineup. Yes, he has. <laughs> I thought lesson. we had one there. <laughs> McElroy, no argument. Frank's going to stay in. And here comes Pinkerton looking for the lead again with inside of five minutes first quarter. I don't think I've ever seen that, Nick. That's six face -off, seven face-offs, and not one of them has been clean that I've seen. You can get a feel for how the officials are going to play this. Here's Gallo. He's got the step. He's got the shot. Oh. And he's got the score. High stepping into the end zone after that one. And for good reason, Joey Gallo. Showing off the skills as Pinkerton jumps back out in front 4-3. <laughs> well, I didn't expect this. Uh, they've, scored, they've scored as many goals almost as they did in the entire game last time. Uh, but here we go. Uh, these guys are ready to go, and Gallo is not the kind of midfielder that you want to give that kind of space, not only for his legs, but to let him get his arms extended. As we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, as Frank wins another faceoff for Pinkerton. This is a rematch from an April 20th affair. It was nearly as low scoring as it gets, 5-4. And while Fioli is left open and he cashes in low. Well, again, Roger, it seemed like the Astros were just a step ahead there of the Exeter defense. Fioli scores for the first time, and Pinkerton's got a two-goal lead here, 5-3. Yeah, and I don't know why. I don't know why there's a little uh, lethargy going on out there with, uh, with the defense getting on the field because Ridge Crossman uh, was going to take a shot on goal here, and he got it checked out of his stick. There's a little bit of a scuffle there, but uh, Pinkerton gets it right up and doesn't lag with the ball. They instantly look downfield, and there they are. They were wide open. Well, Frank couldn't find it. Exeter's Justin Shapiro, the sophomore, had a chance for it. Crossman ends up with it, and we get a timeout from Coach Godro. Well, that one a timely timeout as it preserves the possession for Pinkerton with just over four minutes remaining in this first quarter. Yeah, I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, I did not expect to see this firepower coming uh, straight at us the way uh, the way it has right here, and it. Uh, <laughs> It all starts with Cole Frank in the face-off circle because uh, he is already dominating. And like with many other games and many other fa face-off guys that we've uh, uh, seen over the years, if you don't cap this off early and figure it out, it only is going to take you another three quarters to regret not doing it early, and they've got to figure it out now. Pinkerton has scored five of the last six after falling behind 2 nothing. You talk about Frank, he's a junior, and he's widely regarded as the best in the, in the business at the position at the face-off X. He's already committed to Lehigh University. And according to Coach Godreau, right around 93% yeah. on the entire season. I know, I know. Yeah, he, he, he has really done it. And, um, boy, uh, I, I'm, as you said that, I... I I guess maybe Nick Smith, uh, pa Paolo is, is right up there. Uh, uh, but Paolo's a little bit younger, obviously, than he's a couple years younger than Cole, and Cole's been doing it longer. Uh, but, uh, you know, the one game that was a, was a real shock this season to us was the Londonderry win over Portsmouth, and Nick Smith was the faceoff guy there, or is the faceoff guy there. And I talked to Coach Wiedenfeld after that game. They triple pulled the faceoff. Mm. They pulled a shorty uh, and pulled him back into the box, and uh, that's how they won that game. They kept the ball away from Portsmouth with three pulls. So 
Time to start thinking about maybe plan B here on the faceoff. Meanwhile, the Astros out of the timeout. Complete a couple of passes, and next thing you know, the clear is behind them as they look to settle in again on the attack. Looking for their third straight goal. And their first three-goal lead here of this first quarter. So we make our way towards three and a half to play. Ooh, high pass. Wong tried to extend, tried to keep it in bounds, and cannot. It's a turnover. Here comes Shapiro. Ooh. Sophomore. That looked ugly. Yeah, he, his knee kind of betrayed him, it looked like. Right near the sideline, ball ends up out of bounds. But Fioli touched it out of bounds. So Exeter will keep oh. it. Now a flag is going to be thrown. It's going to be the first penalty either way. Something may have been said down there on the field. Yeah, I didn't see much in the way of motion or, or hacking. So Astros break up the pass. That'll force the whistle, and now we will find out more about the penalty. Okay. Fioli in the delay. Must not have backed up on, uh, on the five-yard before the whistle. Coach Godro requested is not happy. Former St. Ansem head coach at the NCAA level. Yeah. And longtime assistant under Brian O'Reilly. Visibly not happy with the official's decision there. Well, I think, he, you know, in a game like this, that might be a little ticky-tack. But, uh, you know, they've already <laughs> had five or six violations on the faceoff. So they've been consistent with calling it tight, if you will. Inside of three minutes, Exeter on the EMO, which is already down to 10 seconds. Williams, Lechner thought about it. it Somebody's is. open. Albert is too high on the tough angle shot. It sails out of play, and we're back to even strength. I like that new wrinkle in that man up because normally that's Lechner coming down or Sullivan coming, uh, excuse me, coming up from goal line. Uh, now that's, uh, that's Gabe Albert, so little wrinkle there. New look. Albert was instrumental when the Blue Hawks suffered that rash of injuries right around midseason. Albert able to step up and do what was asked. And he's been productive in the program for a while. And had a pretty good look at that one, but just couldn't connect. Meanwhile, it's Lechner, a spin move up top, going to lower that right shoulder. He's got a smaller defender on him. Trying to make his way to the cage now behind the net. Coming Ugh. back around, twisting, turning, <laughs> and scoring. Yes. Lechner able to keep the footwork on his way to the ground. Pretty to watch. Lechner's got his second goal, and Exeter's back within one. <laughs> so he's got one from both sides here with the stretch move. Uh, and, uh, man, he just... He just muscles through, goes to his right hand, comes back, goes to his left, and then crosses over with his left hand to get it past LeBlanc's left side. So, man, lots going on on that play. Takes our clock inside of two minutes. Oh, there we go. McElroy able to avoid Frank at midfield after coming up with a faceoff win. Now Exeter's Evan Delory, the junior. Trying to avoid some tough defense here from Pinkerton's Dylan Stingle. Yeah, a freshman that's been added to the uh, playoff roster. Uh, he was not on their regular season roster, uh, Stingle wasn't. And, uh, just right. Give him a little time here. Here's Williams, full speed ahead. He's got the step, thinking about the shot, and he's got it. Well, you could see him gathering steam there. And Gabe Albert celebrating as the team ties the game yet again with a minute 13 remaining. It's 5-5. Yeah, and he, again, these midfielders, I'm telling you, they've got speed, they've got skill, and they could shoot from both sides. And LeBlanc looked like he didn't even see this ball coming. He, he wasn't even over towards the pipe at all. So, already, 
more combined goals in this first quarter than we saw in the regular season meeting back on April the 20th. Exactly. It was a 5-4 Exeter victory. 5-5 five, five here with one minute to go in the opening quarter. Pinkerton trying to wrestle the lead back. Two players behind the net. They're going to swing it around far side. Quintilani, meanwhile, creeps into the picture here on the near wing. Ball dropped by Uger. He recovers. The senior now trying to shake off two. On his move. Oh. Shot and oh. score. Able to switch hands. Yes. <laughs> wow. Had a defender breathing down his right shoulder, able to switch to the left hand on the release. Uber has got his second goal, and more importantly has the Astros back in front 6-5. Yeah, th th this guy, I mean, he is a workhorse. There's not a lot of players in the state that can do that and, and be successful uh, in their offhand the way he did that in traffic, breaking through three defenders. Uh, just, just a great play by Michael Uber. Another violation. And it's against Cole Frank, so Exeter's going to have it. And a chance to tie here before the end of the quarter. Coach Brewster wants to talk about it. That'll stop the clock with 32 seconds. So he's got something in mind here, probably the last shot. Yeah, right, oh, Roger? For, for, for sure, last shot. Um, you know, uh, this is a good timeout. Uh, you got it in the hands of uh, your best player on the field, arguably. And um, why not run a play here? Um, and I, I got to tell you, I, I like that little wrinkle I saw on the EMO uh, that they had, even though they only had 30 seconds on it. They made it work quickly. Uh, I expect to see something uh, very similar with a rotation down low that uh, uh, frees up, uh, you know, either Nick Sullivan or Lechner. Let's see if, uh, see if that's the way they go. But, uh, yeah, you're going to probably see them just – do a little bit of an open set perimeter uh, pass game here and then get right into the play, I'm sure. Get a look at both head coaches inside their team huddles. And if we can get a shot of the crowd as well, it has grown here to a point where we're getting towards full <laughs> at the end of this first quarter and folks still making their way in. From the parking lot, first of two semifinals here at Bill Ball Stadium. Nick and Ask this Roger Howe with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire crew broadcasting tonight in conjunction with the NFHS Network. It's been a back and forth first quarter. And now Exeter, after taking an early 2 0 lead, they've trailed most of this quarter, have a chance to tie here as we head towards the final minute of this opening quarter. So they're going to work it around. Open set. Astros trying to communicate defensively. A couple of quick passes. There it Sets is. Sets up Lechner far side. A oh. sweeping shot. It's going to sail off into the sun somewhere. Well, that's over an Epping now. That's, that's, yep. don't forget about that ball. It may still be going. 14 seconds remaining. Sullivan going to go right to the cage. Lowers the shoulder. Uh, Pass, though, is off target. Tried to find Williams. Meanwhile, Leeds is going to kick this thing up the field. And we are going to run out of time here in the first quarter. So, after trailing 2-0, Pinkerton rattled off five of the next six goals. And at the end of 12 minutes, have a 6-5 lead here in Exeter. Semi-final action heating up. Don't go anywhere. Second quarter next. You are watching our coverage. 2023 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I semifinals. Right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, in conjunction with the NFHS Network.
Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Well, start of the second quarter here in Exeter. Nick and Astis, Roger Howe with you. Glad you could join us here on semifinal Wednesday. On the boys' side, three different sites tonight. D1, D2, D3 all happening at the same time. Of course, the other side of the D1 bracket features BG and Merrimack. We will bring you that. Coming up at 7.15. A back and forth first quarter. Several lead changes. Pinkerton is played out in front most of the way. And they're going to add to their lead here. Just 19 seconds into the second quarter. This looked like it was almost in slow motion, Nick. I mean, the ball dribbles out. And uh, Fioli just gets a simple ground ball out of this. As the pass goes through, and nobody's covering. He just kind of delicately throws the ball into the net. So Fioli's got his second. Pinkerton is now pieced together back-to-back -back goals. Cole Frank has won another faceoff. And the Astros have a chance to take their first three-goal lead of the contest. Frank is open, shot, and score! My goodness. The junior going to do it himself. Found enough room there, and why not? The Fogo is going to make this 8-5. And these Astros came to play today. Yeah. These guys, they had a 26-goal gap or 26-second goal gap. Make that a 13-second goal gap. Yep. They are ready to play. Two goals here in the first 32 seconds of this second quarter in Exeter. Now on their heels a bit, trailing by three for the first time, eight to five. Both these teams had identical 13 and five records in the regular season. Both challenged themselves with out-of-state opponents. Crossman with a shot, the long pole denied. Yep, cross-check. And now a cross-check penalty appears to be on the way against Exeter's Jack Herring. Senior co-captain, a little too aggressive there, down near the cage. Astros in no hurry, meanwhile. Quintilani looks for some space here near side. Wong, going to fish it out of the corner, and now Uber pumps the brakes. He's got Coach Godreau right in his ear. The defender is up for the challenge. That's DeLello. No need to uh, be hasty with your offense here. You got a chance to double dip on this, and... Uh, don't waste the chance to really break this thing open like Pass, that. Pass, though, is off target. Can Uber get there? He will. He's got a two. The defender there is Shapiro. Long pole trying to stay with the shifty senior. Oh. And back out for Gallo. Coach Godreau pointing with his left hand at a spot in the field he'd like his senior to get to. Draws a slide. He's going to spin. Going to fire, and the bouncer is denied by Burnich. Wong going to sacrifice the body. Another shot gets up, but Burnich is there again. And finally, the whistle comes, and the Exeter penalty is on the way. It comes with two minutes gone by in this second quarter. I think this is going to be on Herring. Yep. Yep. 21 cross check. So one penalty each way. We saw Pinkerton with a delay of game penalty back in that first quarter. So a tough spot for the Blue Hawks here in the first half. Trailing by three, and now a man down for the next minute. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look at that again uh, tonight when the, uh, when the feed is up. Uh, because I, in a playoff game, I don't know if that's a really good call. Um, he, Herring did get his stick out and did extend, but he didn't really create a whole lot of... Well, Wong got shaken up and is down with the Pinkerton training staff, yeah. stretching out. They're working his on his leg, leg, though. Yeah, not his back, which is where the cross-check happened, but who knows. Oh, in the middle, it's Fioli, nice and there play. it is. 
Pass is on time, and the shot is on target. Astros clicking to get a man up goal. 30 seconds into the penalty, and it's now 9-5, Pinkerton. Man, they are cool out there today. There is no wasted space. There's no wasted plays. Everything is very, very cool and calm with this Astros team right now. Everybody's where they're supposed to be, and it looks like they're just having some fun out there right now. It's been a scoring frenzy so far here in this first half. Cole Frank, he's doing his thing at the X, another Astro possession on the way. And Nick, I got to tell you, this is going to get worse for the Blue Hawks if they don't figure this face-off thing out. Cole Frank has won four straight uncontested, like pinch and pop days mm. uncontested. We saw whistles on the first seven face-offs as infractions were made both ways, but Frank has settled in, so to speak, since. Three minutes now gone, second quarter. Big crowd here in Exeter for the semifinals. Astros trying to get back to the state championship for the first time since 2019 when they won the whole thing in Coach O'Reilly's final season. Meanwhile, this one rolls out of bounds. Wong going to restart here for Pinkerton, and the Astros are going to keep it right here. Gallo with Garrity riding him pretty well. Going to give it up. And now Wong deep behind the net. Good to see Wong back on the field. Yeah. I wonder if he just had a cramp in that, that uh, left leg. They were working on at the time. And he's loosened up and back on the field. Meanwhile, Fioli has got a first half hat trick. Thinking about one more. Bouncer, not happening. Burnich read that one well. The junior comes up with another save. And can Exeter come up with the clear is the question now. Not a lot on that shot, but Burnett rose to the occasion just the same. Pretty spin move there by Herring. And that'll do the trick for Exeter. Four minutes in, second quarter. Blue Hawks trailing by four, nine to five. Pinkerton has scored four straight goals. Exeter hoping to break that streak right here. Coach Brewster watching. With his arms crossed here, the second year head man. Not that it's a bad thing that they've uh, uh, now put uh, Cam Leeds on Lechner, but I'm um, just surprised, uh, just the size difference. This one taken off the bounce by Williams. That Astro defense continuing to talk nonstop. Williams looks for a cutter. It goes across the zone, and the shot there you go. is going to end up in the net. Wow. Count that one for Evan Delory, the junior. Not sure... Roger, if LeBlanc got a piece of that initially yeah. or not, but either way, it's goal number six for Exeter. It was really hard to see if he did because, yeah, he did. He did. It went over his, his right shoulder, or excuse me, his right hip by the look. See, this will give us a better look. Yeah, it went right between his stick and his hip as he fell down uh, to make that kick save. Great placement by DeLore. DeLore with a great pass from Williams across the entire crease. Oh, yeah. that's going to be a push. There we go. Only five minutes gone, and you're on it, Roger. A push is going to give it back to Pinkerton. Oh, look at this. Where's the defense? Gallo looking for Cole Frank, who dropped the pass, recovers, and now Gallo again has it. Pinkerton has played with the lead most of the way, despite spotting Exeter two to begin the contest. And now a chance to go back up by four as we near the midway point. Second quarter. Ouch. Uber shot. Bounced off somebody's leg. It may have been Her the Exeter defender, Harry Caracciola. But, yeah, I don't envy whoever it was. <laughs> Uber has got a rocket, as we know. Now he knows how it feels to be a goaltender. It's been an offensive explosion both ways. Five goals apiece in that first quarter. Gallo. Trying to find Fioli on a cut to the net. The pass is going to roll out of play. Yep. The Blue Hawk defense comes up with a win there. Yep. Not, not a bad take, though. I mean, they're, they're still trying to work the middle, uh, and they're taking what uh, the defense gives them. Not a great pass there, but uh, um, keep just playing your game. Exeter trying to weather the storm. Can they score on a second straight possession? Albert looking for a clear. He's going to go up the middle between two Astros. 
It's well done by the seniors. Looking at the net. It's going to fire. That one wide. Lechner has his back, though. He will stay here. That, however, was not a good take. You haven't had the ball on your half of the field almost this entire quarter, and you perhaps could have lost that ball to the goaltender, but you need a settled offense here, and you need to try and get something going. Inside of six minutes now. Lechner's open. Oh, yeah. Tried to find Sullivan on a cross-zone pass that was batted away. Delore recovers in the far corner, and Exeter will have another try. Lechner, like swim it. move, shot. No, that's Sullivan. Yeah, Sullivan. Off target. Kept inbounds by Sullivan himself. And now Lechner from the near side. Picked up by Leeds on the switch. Williams back near side. Shot from the near slot ends up again out of play. Pretty good look for Lazowitz in the hunt for goal number two there. Yeah, I like what they're doing on this left side. Uh, excuse me, on the, uh, uh, the near side. The goalie's left, but... Uh, a lot of switching back and forth between Lechner and Lazowitz on this side. Constant communication as well as we've seen throughout this first half. There it is. Oh, bad pass now. Yeah, it gets behind Lechner out of bounds, and Coach Godreau likes the effort on the Pinkerton sideline. Yeah, where it, for as, as loose that Pinkerton looks, Exeter looks a lot tighter. They just look like they're afraid to make a mistake. And, and oh, hello. Garrity knocked down. Uber shot on the run is wide. Foot race behind the cage. And both participants go flying as Wong and Exeter's Andrew Nicholas were tangled up there. Been a physical first half. The officials have only called one penalty each way. We've seen a number of infractions, particularly at the face-off X, but in terms of physicality, I think they've let them play more often than not so far. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's one of the, the, the more violent games I've ever seen, but that's well, the, now it's picking up a little bit. Right on cue, right? yeah. <laughs> Quinawani goes flying. Meanwhile, Garrity oh, they, no, survives no. a couple of hacks. And now Delori hoping to cement the possession here for Exeter as we count down towards four minutes remaining first half. Blue Hawks have trailed most of the way. They've got a chance to slice it to two here. Lechner trying to avoid leads. Nice good defense. job steering him back out, yeah. Yeah, good back up there, too. Carney was right there. Inside of four minutes, Lechner. See, the, look at the pursuit here on Lechner. Williams stepped down, shot, and a save. LeBlanc got a piece. The ground ball goes to Pinkerton Santa Messino. Now Jackson Chase trying to hunt it down for the Astros. This one goes way up in the air. It's batted back down, and Williams trying to escape the fray now for Exeter. Oh, nice play. Yep, good pass. Lazowitz snaps it to his left, and Albert has some space. The Exeter fans like it. We move towards three minutes to go here until halftime. Yeah, time to slow this down just a bit get a good possession no need to rush just done coming up on the three minute mark you know plenty of time near side oh Lechner nice dodge takes the shot back up top of that pass again just off the mark it's enough to turn it over as Pinkerton now with their foot on the gas shot Nobody behind the net. And good play by Burnich. Goal. Able to beat out Wong with that full extension. Hey, I got to tell you that, that, again, the collapse on Lechner, even with that nice little face dodge, you had Carney and you had uh, Cam Leeds right on top of him, and thus the errant pass when he tried to pass it up top to the box. Good pursuit by the, by the Astros defense here. Another solid clear as well by Exeter. Coming up on two minutes remaining in this first half. Coming up at halftime. Stats, highlights, analysis, full recap, and a semifinal edition of the Out of Town Scoreboard as well as we'll check in at the Division II site, Stello Stadium in Nashua, and the Bank of New Hampshire Stadium up in Laconia where the D3 uh, semis are taking place. Lazowitz 
Whistles that one above the crossbar. Sullivan ready for the restart for Exeter. Inside of two minutes. Sullivan lost it. Got hit there by Santa Massimo, and now it's up for grabs out in front of the cage, and it's the goaltender who emerges. LeBlanc in a foot race up the sideline. Delore trying to stay with him, and his head out. coach is going to bail him out. A good timeout is right there by Coach Godreau. He's going to use his second. It'll stop the clock with a minute 37 remaining. Pinkerton has it, and they're out in front 9-6. Well, hey, aside from the fact that this is a shootout right now, the story of this game is the Astros' defense. I'm doing nothing but watching the defense rotate on this thing, uh, on the uh, Blue Hawks' offense, and they are all over them. They are not giving them any space to operate, and when they do get a good dodge in and have space, they are immediately collapsing in, in uh, and helping out. And that is just, that's how you want to see how this game gets played, and, and uh, uh, it, it's impressive. It really is. Yeah. Everybody in sync, seemingly. Well, you said it earlier in the broadcast a couple of times. You can, we can hear them talking all the way up here. And that's with, the key. With the, with the headphones on. Uh, I, I, I can't hear LeBlanc, but I, I definitely hear the defense talking down there. And that is key. Um, if you're communicating, uh, you know, especially if you're in, in, in a man offense or defense, that is, and, uh, you know, you're, you're – you're sliding and you're filling backside and you're getting into, uh, uh, you know, back in, in, in the slot uh, after sliding. It, it's all working for them right now. It really is all working, especially that last sequence, uh, uh, the possession for the Blue Hawks. They, they just covered everything that they were trying to do. Astros, of course, trying to get back to the state championship for the first time under Coach Godreau. Pinkerton, of course, won the whole thing back in 2019 in Coach O'Reilly's final season of course Pinkerton for years was the division one standard 12 championships under coach O'Reilly from 1994 to 2019 Exeter meanwhile hoping for a comeback and if they can pull that off they'd be in the state final for the third straight time after losing back to back in 21 and 22 against Bishop Girton speaking of Bishop Girton we can see coach Cameron and his staff cooling out so to speak along the far sideline the Cardinals will take on Merrimack coming up tonight at 7:15 in the second part of our semifinal doubleheader all right coach Godreau roaming the sidelines here coming out of the timeout and what do you think Roger is is it a possibility he's thinking last shot here oh, as sure. we come up on one minute remaining yeah. absolutely this is one of those things that you, you, you want to control the ball just to keep the momentum shift in your favor and not let them get anything going into halftime here. Just squelch yep. every possibility uh, and just control the ball. You don't need the goal right now. You need to, you need to manage the game and manage your opponent. Yep, and that's what they're doing here. So they're going to take the clock down to 35 seconds. Gallo being chased by Garrity. Exeter has been willing to press out here, but they kind of have to. Yeah, Pinkerton's just doing a better job of keeping it away. Meanwhile, Uber now is in some trouble. Three defenders. He's going to one-hand this thing out of danger. Hook up with Quinzelani, and we're down to 15 seconds. Textbook Michael Uber right there. Get away from pressure. He was triple teamed, and the only option he had was to protect and run, and he did. Gallo trying to Ooh. dance near side, he ran out of it. space, and is Ooh, he turned it. shaken up. They're going to stop the clock with inside of a second remaining, but not a good sh scene here. Oh. As one of the Astros' better players down and hurt. Watch this if we get a replay. And they're going to clear the field here with no time. now zeros on the clock. There were, or there was, .2 remaining but they're just going to go ahead and bring us to halftime here as the training staff takes a look at gallo yeah that right knee so a somber way to end the first half for pinkerton but the astros are liking what they're seeing in terms of the game here out in front of exeter nine six at the midway point again defense face-offs goaltending Yep. And, uh, and yep. there wasn't much goaltending, so two out of the three ain't bad. 
Uh, just very impressed with the way As the Astros came out. Cool, calm, collected, and they have uh, they they really kind of impressed me in that first half. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Definitely. In a moment, we'll take a break. Come back, recap the whole first half, stats, highlights, analysis, and we'll track down some early scores as well from the other semifinal contests going on statewide. Good to see Gallo back on his feet. Yeah. Pinkerton. Definitely. After 24 minutes, looking good, out in front of Exeter, 9-6. Back in just a moment, you are watching coverage of the 2023 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I semifinals. Right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, broadcasting in conjunction with the NFHS Network. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with The Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years' experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of The Bean Group today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month, Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services, you'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly, no one brings you better offers. Nine six Pinkerton. Our score at halftime here in the 2023 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division One semifinals. Nick Anastas, along with Roger Howe, and about a, what 1,500 or so, maybe 2,000 folks here at Bill Ball Stadium, which includes some of the bigger names in lacrosse circles statewide. Mm -hmm. And I would assume that those pros liked what they saw from these kids in the first half. Pinkerton surrendered the first two goals of the game, but really were in control most of that, of that first half. The Blue Hawks did get on the board initially with goals from Owen Williams and Marshall Lazowitz, 
that made it 2 nothing with just two and a half minutes gone by. Then Pinkerton rattled off five of the next six, including three in a row. Benjamin Quintilani got them on the board. Ryan Lynch tied the game at two, and then Richard Wong scored near the cage to give Pinkerton their first lead at 3-2. That was about midway through the first quarter. Gavin Lechner came back as Exeter answered 3-3 at that point. Pinkerton scores the final two before the end of the first quarter as Joey Gallo and Matt Fioli both lit the lamp. Exeter, though, got the last laugh, scoring twice in the final two minutes of that opening frame. Gavin Lechner second, and then Gabe Albert. So we were tied at five after one. Pinkerton got busy in that second quarter. They scored four straight, the first half's longest run. Michael Uber's second, Fioli second. Cole Frank did it himself after a face-off win. And then Fioli's hat trick made it 9-5. That opened up Pinkerton's largest lead about two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Then both defenses really settled in for a while. We heard from Evan Delore for Exeter. Made it 9-6 at about the seven-minute mark. But over the final 7-12, in fact, neither team able to score. And that's where we are. At the midway point of this semifinal, Pinkerton out in front of Exeter, 9-6. to six. Well, Exeter has got an uphill battle right here uh, in this uh, second half, and they have got to come out strong, they've got to come out fast, and they have got to find a way to do two things. They need to find a way to neutralize Cole Frank as much as they possibly can, and they need to try and get the Astro defense back on their heels and start moving the ball a little bit faster so that they cannot catch up on the rotation with, with uh, Exeter's ball movement and find some space. They're doing a great, Pinkerton that is, is doing a great job of neutralizing Sullivan and Lechner in that second quarter. Uh, even though Lechner has two goals already in the game, but uh, uh, they're still doing a great job of, uh, uh, of taking care of business. What are the first half totals at the X? Yeah, um, Cole Frank, 14 uh, uh, face-off wins against uh, uh, three for Exeter, and two of those were, and now they're polling it, so here we go. Maybe a little too late, but uh, you got to do something, and I'm all for that, so good, good for uh, Coach Brewster. Well, they're going to get uh, an errant pass here that sails out of bounds, so an early yeah. turnover. Yeah. Just eight seconds into this third quarter is going to give it right to right back to Exeter. And this is exactly what I mean. Uh, you know, <laughs> you change things up a little bit. Cole wins the faceoff, but he throws an Aaron pass because the pole's on his hands. This is what you need to do. So a good adjustment from Coach Brewster. And now his team a chance to get back within two. If they can strike first here in the second half. You know, we hear sports a lot about, you know, this is a must win, a must win in, in, in other sports. But this is a, I think this is a must possession. And look at them come right out. Look at this. Yeah. Nearly got it away from Williams. Yep. A bounce pass through the zone is going to get broken up. And eventually it's LeBlanc no. with it. Long outlet pass from the goaltender. And it is on target. A bouncer scooped up by Alec Henry for the Astros. But it's turned over. Cole Summers, the junior attackman, lost his balance. Exeter is going to come right to left. Lechner, meanwhile, in traffic, drops it, recovers, and is going to skirt away from the defender. And now think about a shot. He's going to fake the shot, tiptoe along the crease, back for Lazowitz, who tests the waters. Delorio will take it near side, and now back up top for Albert. Boy, it's almost like Coach Godreau told his defense, okay, you guys had a great half. Time to pick it up a notch. And they have been all over the, the Blue Hawks ball handlers every step of the way here so far. Lechner, another good fake, sets himself up. Shot wide. Goalie. LeBlanc gives it a good oh. effort, but they're going to reward Sullivan instead, and Exeter will keep it here. Wow. No one could have gone either way. I think uh, uh, official Bethke saw small LeBlanc against large Sullivan. Discriminated against the smaller player? Is yeah. that what you're implying here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm afraid so. Meanwhile, an injury update. We saw Joey Gallo get shaken up just before halftime. The senior is on the sideline with what looks like an ice pack on his right knee. So I would say his return is questionable at best. Yeah, highly unlikely. I think that's a great move. Um, 
You know, they're not in the finals yet, but hell, you're up by three. Good move. He's key. He's a key player. Absolutely. Three-year starter. Yeah, it seems like we've been calling his name out for, yeah. <laughs> for a long, long time. A lot of three-year starters with Pinkerton. Maybe the most talented class we've seen since that oh, 2019 nice. championship team. Meanwhile, Sullivan tried for the backhander. Look at the effort from the blank. He goes head first in the corner, and it pays off. Along with the long pole, Brendan Carney, they get it done, and Pinkerton's got it. And in most situations in sports... The There's an interception. Ooh. It's a freshman mistake yep. by Carney as Sullivan makes him pay. The interception and then the point-blank shot. Sullivan went flying, but the midfielder is okay. And Exeter gets a break here. Less than three minutes in, they're back within two at 9-7. Exactly what I was about to say. Uh, you know, the, uh, I, I think that they made the wrong call on that uh, uh, shot and possession, and they get it back here on a LeBlanc hustle play, and boom, <laughs> Sullivan just snaps this thing out in the air. Of course, he's probably, what, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, somewhere in there. Um, kid made a great play. One of the bigger players on the field for sure. He's on his way to Roger Williams to continue his career at the NCAA level. Three minutes gone. Frank Gurdon's got it, and you can hear the Exeter bench trying to rally this defense. Frank took a good whack on that faceoff. Game has seemingly gotten more and more physical as it's developed. I think that's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, that, absolutely. Uh, like I said, I think Pickerton's got to pick it up a notch on defense, although they've been playing well. Lynch, nice quick save. shot with a snap it over the shoulder, pulls it out of the air. Second time denied as well as Burnich starting to heat up between the pipes for the Blue Hawks. With a good save for the junior. This is Herring. He's got room up the middle. He's got the clear. Short pass gathered by Lechner, and now Exeter is in business. Chance to get back within one for the first time since the opening minutes of the second quarter. Quick shot, Sullivan oh. save upstairs oh. is made. Well, LeBlanc able to snatch that one out of the sky. And a big save there. Keeps it a two-goal difference with four minutes gone, third quarter. You know, and we, we talk about this all season, about shot selection and mixing things up. And uh, Nick Smith hasn't done a lot of that this season, in my mind. Uh, he, he's done a lot of wraparounds, and he's, he's tried to pluck corners uh, quite often. Uh, that would have been a good spot for him to kind of go down low on LeBlanc and, uh, uh, you know, kind of mix it up. But, uh, hey, LeBlanc rose to the occasion there. Good defense. Uber gathers it in one-handed. Closed out by Garrity. Quintilani will take a breath here on the near wing. Gets a screen from Lynch. Fires on the run. Save made down low by Burnich. Starting to push that save total up, Roger. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, got, he's got six on the game. Three in uh, second, three now. Five minutes in third quarter. Lazowitz with Fioli all over him. Good pop. Yeah. Love it. A little bit of a no-look pass there. Sails into the stick of Williams. Exeter on the clear, and now going to settle in on the attack. Again, a chance to cut the lead in half as we approach the midway point, third quarter. Pass in the middle, another save. Now the goaltenders, Roger, you said it at the top of the broadcast that they were both going to play a big role tonight in this third quarter. They're starting to shine. Yeah, and uh, uh, give it to Tyler LeBlanc for... Uh, Kind of picking up. Uh, Here comes a flag. Albert went flying. Pinkerton's Cody Santa Massimo took a chop at him. And it looks like the Astros midfielder is going to jog to the penalty box. The junior shrugging his shoulders at Coach Godreau. So the slash yep. is going to put Pinkerton on the defensive here for the next minute. Second EMO for Exeter. The first since the first quarter. They came up short. Yeah, they had a 30-second one in the first quarter. This is going to be a full minute, and they had good rotation on that one. Let's see what they do here. Lazowitz back to oh! and an over-the-shoulder shot and wow. score for Nick Sullivan. Well, you toss the table salt over the shoulder, don't you? You 
<laughs> toss the ball into the net in the same fashion if you're Nick Sullivan as well. <laughs> His second goal has got Exeter back within one at 9-8. I, I got to tell you, between the collegiate game and the high school games that I have seen this year, which I, I think I've seen more games this year than I've ever seen, the plays that our athletes that are playing this game uh, are, are making these days are just sensational. Yeah, that was impressive at any level there. It, exactly. Meanwhile, Frank with the win, and here he comes. Oh, survives a, oh. a check and then scores anyway. And all aboard is Cole Frank, able to deliver again off the face off the junior. Scores for the second time tonight. Pinkerton scores for the first time since halftime. And they're back in front at the midway point of this third quarter, 10-8. Yeah, and uh, Exeter's lucky there wasn't a penalty here because uh, he got slashed right across the head. Uh, it's coming up right here. Maybe we'll see it right, yeah, right before that. Uh, and uh, his head went flying back. So, uh, hey, they're lucky they're not man down right now. And Frank just keeps on trucking. Yep. He's got two goals on the day. Pinkerton has been led by Matt Fioli on attack with three goals. It's been a balanced effort for Exeter. Yeah, yep. Fioli's he's got two assists, too, Nick. Yeah. He's, he's having a day. Lechner and Sullivan with two apiece for Exeter. Coming up at five minutes, third quarter. Astros a two-goal lead. They've played with the lead most of the way, led by as many as four back in the second quarter. Trying to get to the championship where they would, would await the winner of Bishop Girton against Merrimack. Cardinals... And Tomahawks coming up here on the NFHS network at 7.15. Oh, shot yep, and found score. It. Found it. Fioli. Why not? How about number four? The senior attack on his way to Franklin Pierce. Impressive tonight. It's 11-8 Pinkerton. Yeah, impressive play by Fioli, but also a, an impressive shot selection on this. Watch him go to the far corner low. That's that's just a great, experienced offensive player's play. Go to his left hand from a right-hand split, and he goes low corner, weak side. Just great play. Great play. Meanwhile, Frank able to juggle. Oh. The violation sure. against the Astros. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Looked clean. May have been on the wing. Yeah. Next shot will take it. Inside of five minutes. Down three again. That was the halftime deficit as the Astros have scored the last two. Well, Fioli is going to Franklin Pierce, which Franklin Pierce obviously is in the uh, NE10. Yep. And we have uh, the St. Anselm's coach here, Coach Shimana, yeah. looking down uh, at what will be uh, someone that he'll have to figure out on uh, the defensive side of things this uh, 2024 coming season. So uh, there's several NE10 players out here that are committed. Look out. Big collision. Love it. Good play. And then a good play by the long pole freshman Brendan Carney. Boom. Came up with the ground ball. And now a few passes later, Pinkerton crosses the 50, but this one sails away from Alec Henry and ends up out of play, and Exeter will take it back over. Great play by uh, not only LeBlanc on the clear to see Jackson chase, but Jackson to twirl out of pressure and uh, kind of do a sidearm pass uh, to get the uh, clear going, but uh, just a you know bad finish there. Inside of four minutes. Again, the Blue Hawks hoping to cut the gap to two. DeLore. And now Williams. The chatter continues amongst the Astro defense. Spin move, Lechner. Shot. Off the post. Yep. It's loose and then batted away. Look and eventually that. Pinkerton gets to it as Jackson Chase Johnny on the spot. Long pass off the stick of leads. Wow. And then advanced by Carney and wide open in the middle. Pinkerton's got numbers. Pass near the cage. Wong in a crowd is knocked down. A whistle in the crease. and a crease violation. Yeah, that could have been a push too. Officials letting them play as we hit three minutes to go third quarter. Blue Hawks look to push. Tough angle shot, 
And a good play by LeBlanc as he wins the foot race. They have surprised Sullivan taps the side of his helmet to show you that you got to be paying attention. Yeah, it's not the closest to the end line, though. It's closest to where the ball goes out of bounds. I don't know if I like that call. Well, that may have made up for the earlier instance, right? It, it didn't because they gave it to uh, Le LeBlanc. Got it back, if you recall, before. Uh, remember, he, he stretched out in the corner. And that, that was right after that. But, yeah, more than likely. No problem on the clear for Lynch. Yeah, they have had no problems clearing the ball today. Pinkerton looking for their largest lead of the second half. Fioli denied. Burnage stops him down low and then stomps out the fire. Able to corral from the crease. And He's now Herring trying to swim upstream. He's done a good job on the clear, and he does it again. Right up the middle. Blue Hawks have it. Again, trying to... Nibble this lead down to two. Yeah, Burnich has looked good in this uh, third quarter. He's been tested. Come up with uh, about, about four big saves here. Yeah, he's already eclipsed his first half total of three. All right, Exeter, Roger. They scored two earlier in this third quarter, but haven't been heard from in the last several trips. Sure, sure. Time, time to get uh, Lechner involved here. Williams back door. Oh, Sullivan is near the cage. <laughs> Lehigh. He's got it back. LeBlanc oh, rather no, 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 no. crawling behind the net. Oh. Draws a whistle and the Astros will take it. A great initial save and then damage control by the senior goaltender. Well, the official called a hold on Nick's, Nick Sullivan and I, I got to put my glasses on because I don't think I saw that. Good job on the clear. Leads the long pole, wants one. It comes in chest high and an easy save for Burnich. Long outlet. Lechner. Go to the rack. Going to tap it to himself with a minute 15. Leads with him stride for stride. Crossman going to meet him near the net. There it is. Going to spin on yep. Crossman and fire a low shot for a score. Yep. Gavin Lechner. Sneaky on the release there for his third goal. And Exeter back within two at 11-9. Yeah, you got to get this guy involved. And, you know, he's the captain out there on offense. He needs to start picking his game up a little bit here and doing stuff just like that. I would have liked to have seen him get that ball after uh, uh, the Blue Hawks cleared it and, and just make a race to the rack on that. Uh, he, the end result was the same, but uh, uh, good for him. they got to get him involved. Another win for Frank. Been dominating tonight at the X as expected. One of the state's best, if not the best. Final minute, third quarter. Pinkerton hoping to match their halftime lead of three goals. Oh. An errant pass is going to roll back towards midfield. Leeds is knocked down. <laughs> A swiping effort by Fioli draws the whistle. And Exeter is given possession. Jeez, I, I thought that was a good play. Lechner. Got the hot stick for Exeter. Going to give it up, though, to Lazowitz, the sophomore, and we hit the final 30 seconds here of this third quarter. Blue Hawks thinking final shot here. Yeah, I think they got a little momentum here. Put those timeouts in your back pocket unless you're going to lose possession on a, on a bad pass or something. Nice Lazowitz, dodge. Good nice dodge. dodge. Shot and score. Beautiful. Able to shake off Fioli. And then light the lamp with just 16 seconds remaining, and here comes Exeter's counter punch as they're back within a goal. Yeah, and uh, you could feel it. You could feel the uh, the momentum turning just a little bit. Uh, you know, Cole Frank is breaking up the momentum just a bit uh, with his face-offs, but uh, uh, a couple of uh, um, unusual mishaps there. Unforced turnovers by the Astros in this uh, quarter has really kind of let that momentum uh, uh, continue on, and here goes Frank again. Yeah. He's already scored twice, but he's stripped from behind. There's the pursuit we've been looking ball for. Ball is loose. The ball flies back towards midfield with five seconds now remaining. Oh, Lechner, no. kind of a side arm pass there. It's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. Wow. Exeter, after trailing by three at halftime, they score the final two goals of the quarter and are back within one at 11-10. Buckle up. <laughs> As we speed towards the finish line here, a ticket to Sunday's championship on the line. Will it be Pinkerton for the first time in four years? 
or does Exeter complete the comeback and head back to the championship game for a third straight year? We find out next, fourth quarter on the way. Pinkerton 11, Exeter 10. You are watching live coverage of the 2023 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I semifinals right here on Friday Night Lights New Hampshire in conjunction with the NFHS Network. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Well, the gloves are off <laughs> here for the final 12 minutes in Exeter. Exeter trailing Pinkerton. 11-10 here in this 2023 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I semifinal. The winner heads to the championship, which will be played right here on Sunday afternoon. The Blue Hawks, the number two seed, have trailed most of the night. By as many as four goals. Cole Frank looking oh. for a hat trick, and he's got one. Wow. It comes just 11 seconds into this fourth quarter. The face-off specialist gives Pinkerton a little cushion. It's 12-10. Yeah, so they've put Ryan Garrity out there, the long stick midfielder, uh, to go against Frank. And, and although he's, he's not getting the jump, obviously, he's not a face-off guy, He's not giving a whole lot of resistance after Cole gets the ball in his stick. He, he's got to be on him a little tighter. And although you've got to play the ball before you play the body now on a faceoff, he should be really working him a little harder than that. He's really not giving much uh, back uh, in terms of pressure. Meanwhile, this one on the ground, and it's a pig pile. Here comes the freshman. It's Carney. No, he's in. He's in. Got a timeout. Oh, all right. Coach Godro felt like his freshman was in trouble. And he's going to use his first timeout of this second half here, just 27 seconds into this second quarter. If you're just joining us, Exeter on a hunt for a third straight championship appearance. Got out to the start they were hoping for in front of what's everything but officially a home crowd here in Exeter. They scored two in the first two and a half minutes and led 2-0. Pinkerton three straight after that. Quintilani, Lynch, and Wong. Gavin Lechner for Exeter tied it at three about midway through that first quarter. Then goals from Gallo and Fioli gave Pinkerton a two-goal lead. Wild final two minutes of that first quarter. Lechner for Exeter gets his second. Gabe Albert, his teammate, able to follow. Tying the game at five with just over a minute remaining. Michael Uber with 39 seconds. Made it 6-5 Pinkerton, and that was our score after the first quarter. Second quarter, Pinkerton kept rolling. Stringing together three more. Fioli, Frank, Fioli in that order. 9-5 was Pinkerton's largest lead. Just two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Evan Delore, the final goal before halftime. 9-6 was our halftime score. Those two men on the screen should be familiar by now. It's Bill Ball, who the stadium is named after, the Exeter Athletic Director on the left, and that was Brian O'Reilly. Icons. Who is the acting athletic director, of course, and still the football coach, and of course was a long time man on the sidelines, a fixture for Pinkerton over the years, long before lacrosse was even a sanctioned sport in the NHIAA. He was winning club titles in the 70s. a day in 2019. Meanwhile, a save is made by Burnich. He has heated up here in this second half, and that has allowed Exeter to get back into this game. Nick Sullivan on attack scored twice to begin this third quarter, bringing Exeter within one at 9-8. The second came on an EMO. 
midway through that third quarter. Oh. Then Frank and Fioli scored again, 11-9. Lechner and Lazowitz for Exeter, and Frank has scored his third here to begin this fourth quarter. Meanwhile, another melee as Uber, who's made it a habit tonight, escapes with possession for Pinkerton. He is a freight train out there. He, he, he single-handedly went right through the defense and did exactly what uh, uh, any coach wants to see you do at this stage of the game, and that is control the ball, don't throw it away, don't do something stupid, come back, let your troops regroup, and get a good possession here, and that's exactly what, uh, what, what he did there. Quintilani, a spin move near side. Jammed up on the pass, and it's turned over. Brown ball ends up with Exeter's Justin Shapiro, and the Blue Hawks get the stop they were hoping for. You know, I was going to say at the end of the third quarter there, we had to go to a break, but uh, Exeter came out in that third and did exactly what they had to do. Burnage had to get hot, and they had to get a good uh, uh, roll going, which they did with the uh, four goals. Uh, and now Pinkerton, at the start of the fourth, is doing exactly what they need to do, which is control the ball again and, uh, uh, you know, really uh, buckle down on defense. Still only a two-goal or Yeah, two-goal game. Here. Out in front. Oh! Sullivan, who had scored twice on a similar play near the net, knocked off balance upon the release. Off target pass. Eventually taken in by Chase, but he's in trouble. That's going to be, and yeah. And as Quintilani make that chase hits the ground, Exeter is going to be given possession along that far sideline. Yeah, the Blue Hawks look like they were actually off sides there. Good effort from junior defenseman Harry Caracciola for Exeter. Three minutes gone, fourth quarter. Blue Hawks have trailed most of the way. We were tied at three about midway through that first quarter, but Pinkerton has been in the driver's seat since. They've led by as many as four. Turn, yeah. Shot and score, and that lead is down to one as Gabe Albert found a little spot in the alley. And Exeter is right back in this thing, down by one, 12-11. And there's, uh, there's Gavin Lechner getting involved in the offense. Uh, they put him on the far side at a midfield spot. And he finds Gabe, who's in a crease attackment spot. So talk about mixing it up and changing things around. That's, uh, that's what you want to do. It's Albert second. Yep, and he keeps going and going. Then a balanced attack led by Kevin Lechner's three goals. Another stop for the Exeter defense. Garrity, though, off balance on the outlet pass. And Wong able to gather for Pinkerton. Again, a good play on a, on a ground ball. Pinkerton going to extend the possession here with four minutes gone. Uber, step down bouncer. Goes out of play. Wong had his back. And now Lynch will be ready for the restart. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. You had a good back up there. He saw what was in front of him. We haven't heard from Lynch this, uh, this half. No. The one, the one goal to his total came in the first quarter. Yeah. yeah. So Exeter has done a pretty good job of keying in on one of Pinkerton's better players. Meanwhile, Uber may have thought about it. Lynch instead is going to spin, try to avoid two defenders behind the net. Now lost it. No push. Oh, they're going to call it. Yep. yep. I thought it, momentum. Lynch went down pretty hard there on the far wing. They'll keep it here. Yeah, and I can remember talking to uh, Coach Godro earlier in the season, probably before the Exeter game, in fact, where he, he wanted to see more... Uh, spread out scoring uh, this year from his uh, offense, and he certainly is getting that. Get some stops defensively here as well as Shapiro. Full speed ahead. One more. Blue Hawks will settle with Sullivan. Crossman chasing him here near side, and he'll settle down in the corner with nearly five minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. Clock starting to become a factor. Exeter looking to maximize each possession moving forward. A chance to tie it right here for the first time since early in the first quarter. Well, Pinkerton's gone zone here on defense, and uh, it's forcing Lechner to do just what he's doing now. Shot on the move, oh. and another save by LeBlanc. The senior covers up the corner. And now the Astros 
Base limited pressure on the ride, looking to push, but the pass off target, trying to find Santa Massimo. Instead, it's going to go the other way with Sean DeLello. Exeter has it. As we near the midway point, fourth quarter, again a chance to tie. Delore had his eye on the cage there. Thinks again and pulls it back out as Albert is going to slow this to a crawl. This is very smart. Very smart. Get your first line out there. Don't rush it. Don't try and get a transition goal and throw it away. Both Williams and Lazowitz jog onto the field for Exeter. All right, Pinkerton, they're tasked with uh, protecting the lead here. Exeter cautiously taking their time as we move inside of six minutes. Lazowitz picked up on the switch. Oh, pass taken near the shoe by Sullivan. Oh, here it is. Blackner oh. thought about it. Extra pass for Williams, yep. and it. Wow. Score it. Wow. Oh, uh, it looked like it hit the crossbar and then went in. Wow. Let's look at this because you could hear it up hit. here. A difference of an inch or so, and that one may have rocketed back up into the air. Instead, it goes in, and we're, we're tied at 12. I thought for sure Lechner was going to take the scope, the shot, and it just right under. Yeah, it just kisses the crossbar. Uh, hey. He got the first goal of the game, and I said, this kid's got a rocket. And when he is on, he is on. And he was right on on that one. And good for Lechner to, to, to give that twist and turn that uh, certainly moved LeBlanc over in the crease to reposition at the top of the key. And uh, he just blew it by him. Just blew it by him. The junior and a Jacksonville commit scores his second goal. And we are tied at 12. Exeter is pieced together now. Roger Ford, the go. game's last five goals overall. Yeah. And, including uh, two straight. Yeah, this is, uh, this is becoming quite the battle here. 12-12. But if there's medicine, it's a face-off win, and Pinkerton gets another from Cole Frank. As we move towards five minutes, the Astros want the lead back. We're tied for the first time since the first quarter. Pinkerton again looking for their first championship appearance since they won the whole thing back in 2019. Exeter hoping to get to a championship round for the third straight season. Uber off the screen. The senior wants a shot. That one's off target, but good hustle. We'll keep it at this end. That is Pinkerton's Adam Scala, the junior, who's going to restart it now behind the cage. We haven't said his name at all today. Coach Godro going to trust the junior here down the stretch inside of five minutes. Lynch Ooh. trying to muscle up. Uh -oh. Finds Fioli. Shot. Jammed up. Didn't come out right. It's going to roll slowly out of bounds. But unchallenged there with Scala and Pinkerton will have another crack. Yeah, and good collapse there by the, uh, Pink, or the uh, Blue Hawk defense. They doubled up on uh, Fioli and he got nothing on it. Oh, cross the zone. Fioli, oh. shot and score. Well, he's having himself win or lose a memorable game. How about five goals to lead everybody? None bigger than that one there as Pinkerton goes back out in front 13-12 with 4.22 to go. Yeah, picking up where I left off on that comment about my discussion with uh, Coach Godro on, on spreading out the, uh, the offense. Here's a guy that's uh, picking right back up where Lynch left off in the Londonderry quarterfinal game. He Five goals with this kid and look at the placement of the shot again. Yep. Astros doing it without the services of senior Joey Gallo in the second half as well. He was lost back in the second quarter with, a, with an apparent knee injury. Foot race! That's going to go Pinkerton. It was Wong versus Shapiro and it looks like Wong is the winner. You know who's missing from the Exeter defense? We haven't mentioned it all game. Is uh, Tanner Smith? Right. Uh, you know their 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 top defender is not uh, out there. The junior. I uh, see he's down on the on the sidelines in civvies, but uh, oh, bad pass or bad shot. It's gonna leave the field with some speed, yeah. and it's gonna favor Exeter. There's the stop they were hoping for. They're gonna take over in their own end with inside of four minutes, trailing by a goal here, 13-12. Yeah, Godreau is not happy. He is not happy because he, he had no backup, number one, and he didn't need to take that shot. So possession being <laughs> critical at this stage, you do not want to do things like that. Exeter hoping to take advantage. 
Behind the cage, it's Sullivan looking for a hat trick. Finds Lechner near side instead. Back up top, Williams going to cycle it far side for Lazowitz. 3.20 to go. Trying to free up Lechner. Leads, hacking at him. Going to shift sides. Got to go. Oh. Shot it. Oh, wow. <laughs> a pole to pole save there <laughs> by the senior Tyler LeBlanc. Did that was really look good at times today. No, he got that. May have been the helmet, may have been the stick either way. A spectacular save to preserve the lead. And now, <laughs> with three minutes remaining, Exeter ready for a restart here on the near side. Uh, they're putting the pressure on the, on the Astros, that's for sure. Astros are staying zoned. Lazowitz. Exeter staying patient. The Pinkerton fans stomping on the aluminum bleachers and chanting defense. Final two and a half. Blue Hawks continuing to look for a shot. Turn it. Oh! Albert, pretty good wrister. Sailed on him. And now a timeout is going to come from Coach Brewster. I think that's a good timeout, Nick. Yeah. The young head coach has got something in mind with 2.29 to go. Well, if, if anything... If he doesn't have, if he's not going to run a play here, if anything, the the value in this timeout is the fact that the Blue Hawks are getting their chances against this zone, and they're just not hitting the net, right. with the exception of that one uh, save right there that uh, Le LeBlanc made. Uh, but uh, you you, you got to get your guys in and say, listen, hey, calm down, calm down. Right. All right, We're, we we've got momentum in our favor. The bad part of this timeout is that it now gives the Astros a chance to switch up the defense. I would not be surprised if they come out in man and they press really hard to get the ball back. Watch what happens out there from both sides. First of two here tonight. That's Coach Chris Cameron. His sons, of course, part of that coaching staff this time of year. They're down there with him. BG, the top seed, coming up. In about 45 minutes, 7.15, they'll face Merrimack in the second part of this semifinal doubleheader. But still some drama left to get to here. 2.29 remaining. Pinkerton has played with the lead most of the night. They've led by as many as four. Exeter surging in the second half. We'll have a chance again to tie it. Both teams with 13 and five. Exeter, the two seed, Pinkard in the three. The tiebreaker, of course, was the head-to-head -head win by the Blue Hawks back in late April. Boy, that, that was a matchup that uh, they could have taken advantage of. Uh, Sullivan with Santa Messino, a short stick on him. Lazowitz wants it. Shot. Going to whiz past the goaltender's head out of bounds. 2.13 to go. Yeah. To tell he was going for the uh, weak side of LeBlanc there. Sullivan against Santa Massimo. Oh, yeah. Gets inside of him. Shot there off the side of the net. It goes out of bounds, and Pinkerton is going to have it. He had to have stepped in the crease. I didn't see them. You get another look there. Sullivan took a shot from behind. Off yep. balance on the release. Yeah, he stepped. He got hip checked on the way to the ground as well. Pinkerton a big stop. Now can they clear it from their own end as we move inside of two minutes to go, fourth quarter. Uber going to tiptoe the sideline. He's past midfield, but his pass is low. Lynch now in a foot race. Oh, it's knocked it away and turned over. Lynch couldn't get there. Caracciola with him step for step, and it pays off for Exeter. Blue Hawks have it. A minute 45 now remaining. Now the Astros ride trying to slow down the Blue Hawks. Caracciola going to get to midfield without an issue, and the long pole gets rid of it. Here's DeLore. Far side wing, final 90 seconds here, fourth quarter. Exeter down a goal. They go behind the cage. Sullivan. Near side, Lechner. Again, the Astro fans banging on the bleachers. Round the horn it goes. The clock tick, tick, ticking down to a minute 15. Uh -oh. Near side, Lechner's open, fakes the shot, gets inside the defender, flicks it behind the cage for Sullivan. Back up top it goes, Lazowitz stepped out, shot off, the crossbar flies out of bounds. 
And Exeter will keep it with just over one minute remaining. Wow. Another rocket. Lechner swims through a sea of red. Save made by LeBlanc. Ground ball goes to Santa Massimo, who's off and running. Pass, though, is too high for Leeds. It's backed up at midfield by Henry. And now it's Wong. Trying to avoid contact here with 35 seconds remaining. And a timeout is called by Coach Gaudreau. The Astros sideline celebrating a standing ovation from the Pinkerton parents. But this one not quite done just yet. 35 seconds to go, but Pinkerton in a good spot here with possession out in front 13-12. Wow. What a sequence of events since that timeout. About 2.29 was that timeout uh, uh, by Exeter, and uh, here we are down to 35, and uh, what, what great action here. Uh, you had a little bit of everything there, a little body, uh, crossbars. You had uh, great saves, uh, good good uh, dodging, uh, and uh, whistling wide uh, shots. Uh, just uh, just a whole bucket full of stuff uh, lacrosse-wise there. Exeter's last goal came at the 539 mark. Since then, LeBlanc has really stood tall for Pinkerton, including there a moment ago to preserve this lead. Yeah, he's got... He's got as many saves in this quarter as he had for the entire three quarters prior. There you go. Six saves in this quarter. We'll get to all the numbers coming up during our post-game coverage. Watch. Uh, well, they got the ball with Lynch. He's not the fastest guy out there, but uh, they might get it. Uh, might get it over to uh, uh, who is that? Santa Bacino, or excuse me, Quintilani. Uh, no, they're going to let him run it. Two defenders on him. Yeah, they're going to let him run it. Nicholas and Caracciola yeah. trying to hack at him. It's loose. Lynch goes down. Ball goes yeah. out. Oh. And a push is called. Oh. It's oh. going to be a push with 26.9 seconds remaining. Yeah. Yeah, you could see that Lynch is not the fastest guy out there on the field in the pursuit by the Exeter. Now they've got him pinched. He oh. swims out of a jam. There he is. 20 seconds. Lynch still with it behind the cage. Three defenders in the area. Fioli going to rifle it back around Quinsolani. Back out it goes for Wong. And Another time. Oh. No, it's a turnover. I turnover with 11 seconds. Exeter, quick start. Lazowitz midfield down to eight seconds. Lazowitz down the middle. Five seconds. Pass broken up. Whistle and a timeout first from the Exeter sideline. Wow, he was going crazy too. Coach Brewster wanted that bad. He wanted it back at like the 40-yard line. Timeout comes with 4.4 seconds remaining. Perhaps Coach Brewster lobbying for a second or two to be added to this clock. The officials are getting together, but as of now, 4.4 remaining. Exeter down a goal. How many plays as a coach do you have for a situation like this? I, I, Not many, right? With only four seconds? Well, I guess it's going to be... Where is the ball going to be first? It looks like it's going to be on the – yeah, I think the <laughs> Coach Howe's out there asking where the position of the ball is going to be, just uh, as I was thinking. Uh, really, the only thing you could do is crowd the crease, probably get this ball into, um, you know, either Williams or Lechner's hands, uh, Williams being the faster of the two. Uh, but uh, get your best ball handler with the ball to start at the whistle and just throw something at the crease. Get, get, get something down there. Anything can happen, uh, but nothing's going to happen. Yeah, they're going to they're going to back this clock up. Five point eight. Yep, they're going to back it up. Yep. So they'll add nearly a second and a half. Five point eight seconds. You know, so give hey, give these guys credit along with Bill Ball, who is the uh, head of the officials uh, in the state. Uh, they consulted on that, and uh, they saw what we saw. And uh, in this day and age of high technology, they're not looking at a Surface Pro uh, laptop down there to right. try and figure things out. And, and I think they got it right here. Yeah. They really do. All right. It's going to be, I think, Lechner with the ball. And you're going to crowd right. the crease. It's Lechner just inside. The it's been standing across from the senior. 5.8 to go. Exeter looking for a Hail Mary here to force overtime. Pinkerton trying to hang on to their one-goal lead. 
Everybody's on their feet in the stands. Lechner looking for a back door. It's knocked down. The ball is loose, and the Pinkerton Astros are going back to the state championship. For the first time in four years, they'll play on championship Sunday against the winner of Bishop Curtin and Merrimack. Jubilation along the sidelines as the Astro players swarm each other after a hard-fought 13-12 victory over a very good Exeter Blue Hawk team. Well, and you know what? This play could have worked except for the uh, bat down by, looked like it was either Tyler Leeds or, uh, or Chase. Uh, but uh, Nick Sullivan was standing all alone, right on goal line extended. So, hey, what an exciting game. What an exciting game. I did not expect <laughs> 25 goals yeah. out of these two teams. The two combined for only nine back in late April during their regular season affair, but we were spoiled tonight if you're a fan <laughs> of offense at least as both teams seemingly Roger came ready to play. It was Exeter that scored the first two. Yeah. Owen Williams, Marshall Lazowitz in that order just two and a half minutes into the game Pinkerton went on an early run three straight to take their first lead Quinzelani Lynch and Wong in that order Gavin Lechner scored the first of three to tie the game at three Pinkerton two straight after that Joey Gallo who unfortunately was lost due to injury at the end of the first half scored his long goal late in that first quarter Matt Fioli first of five made it five wow. three kid was on fire Exeter did respond two straight inside the final two minutes of the first quarter Lechner second gave Alberts first Uber had the last laugh with his second goal to make it six five just before the end of the first quarter second quarter Pinkerton's momentum continued Fioli number two Cole Frank who was an unexpected surprise on attack Tonight for Pinkerton, first of three goals, made it 8-5. And then the Astros took their largest lead on Fioli's hat trick, 9-5, just two and a half minutes into the second quarter. That forced an Exeter timeout. Blue Hawks responded. Evan Deloria's lone goal made it 9-6. Then we were scoreless over the final seven-plus minutes before halftime, and 9-6 ended up being our halftime score. Third quarter, Exeter came alive. Nick Smith, the senior, two goals, both near the cage. The second coming on an EMO. And Exeter was right there at 9-8. They trailed by one midway through that third quarter. Pinkerton, back-to-back -back goals, about a minute apart. Frank, his second, Fioli's fourth. And Pinkerton looking good again inside of five minutes, third quarter, up by three, 11-8. Exeter, though, the last laugh in the third quarter as they score back-to-back -back goals. Lechner and Lazowitz, and that set the stage for an exciting fourth quarter. Pinkerton, a one goal lead going into the fourth, 11-10. Frank made it 12-10. Hat trick tonight for the faceoff specialist. It came just 11 seconds into that fourth quarter. Exeter's Albert and Williams strung together two goals about two minutes apart. Exeter tied it for the first time since the first quarter at 12 with 5.39 to play. Then a few things happen, right, Roger? As Tyler <laughs> LeBlanc Stood on his head at times over the final five-plus minutes. And Fioli, why not number five, ends up being the game winner for Pinkerton at the 422 mark. And that is it as the Astros avenge the regular season loss against Exeter. They earn their 15th overall victory if you include the two tournament right, wins. Right. But most importantly, they're back where the Astros are used to being. And that's in the state championship where they'll await the winner of Merrimack and BG. And this, this Astros team, we've been talking about it certainly late in the season as we did a little bit more uh, of their games. They have been working hard, and they are peaking at the right time of the year. They, they, they looked really good in the last third of the season. Mm. Uh, but uh, I, I have a bone to pick with uh, Coach Godreau. Um Cole Frank wasn't 93% today. He was 86%. Wow. 25 for 29. Wow. So we, we got an issue with him on that. But, hey, he was just marvelous tonight. I did not expect that he was going to pull out three goals and be dominant at the uh, faceoff X that, uh, that, that, that dominant. Uh, but uh, LeBlanc, uh, we weren't expecting LeBlanc to start this game. We, we were looking at Michaud because he started every game that we've done this year and every game that I've seen uh, aside from the broadcast. And uh, LeBlanc 
had 12 saves. To, or, yeah, 12 saves tonight. Uh, and he dominated in the uh, fourth quarter. So, yeah, uh, goaltending and faceoffs. Yep. You nailed it, as usual. And in the end, the slimmest of wins for Pinkerton, 13-12 over Exeter. All right, do not stray away because... Part two. Yep, coming up in about 25 minutes or so. Exeter and BG, the Cardinals, the top seed, of course, overall in a quest for another championship appearance. The bigger goal, obviously, would be to capture a third straight Division I championship. They're going to face Merrimack, the fifth seed Tomahawks, coming off their biggest win in program history. Yeah. A quarterfinal overtime victory over next-door neighbor Bedford, widely considered an upset. So, Oh, no. Not don't widely go considered. It was an anywhere upset. Anywhere. <laughs> We're was. getting ready for the second part of our semifinal doubleheader. All right. For our crew here at Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, He's Roger Howe. I'm Nick Anastas saying so long. Final score, final time. Pinkerton, 13, Exeter 12. It's been a presentation of the 2023 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I semifinals. Right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Broadcasting in conjunction with the NFHS Network.